Dave Swift here for ClientAmp.com, and you're watching the Taco Truck Roundup. If you haven't seen this show before, it's a recap of all of my recent AppSumo reviews. Most of my videos are 20, 30, even 40 minutes long, and I put out five videos last week. So if you don't have a few hours to kick back and watch in-depth reviews of apps on AppSumo, well, then this video is perfect for you because I'm gonna keep it nice and bite-sized. However, if anything in this video catches your eye, I've got links to all of the full-length videos in the description of this video. All right, let's kick things off with the very first app, Letterly. This is a pretty cool app for your mobile phone. It works on both Android as well as iOS. And the premise is fairly simple. You just talk into your phone, any thoughts that are occurring to you, and Letterly is gonna go ahead and not only transcribe that text, but it will also clean it up. It'll make the grammar correct and just fill in any holes for maybe some words that you left out. Then you can repurpose that text to tweets or a LinkedIn post, or even just a bulleted list of the most important things that happened in your voice ramblings. One viewer mentioned that they're gonna use it for their ADHD ramblings just to capture their ideas down, and I think that's a great idea. One other killer feature for using Letterly, I think, is in-person meetings. There's a lot of tools to capture your Zoom meetings and then transcribe those and send out a nice summary, but what about in-person meetings? You could look like a total superhero if you put your phone down on the table, of course, letting everybody know what you're doing, record the meeting, and then at the end of the meeting, just send everybody a summary of everything that was discussed. I think that would be amazing, but there is one problem with using Letterly for this. It's not that it's incapable of doing it, it's that it does have a 15 minute recording window. So that is a little bit of a bummer. In fact, it's really the only major concern I had with Letterly. Overall, it's a very beautiful app and it worked pretty much seamlessly throughout my testing. The only downside I saw was I tried doing AI subject lines and those were not necessarily the greatest thing that I saw, but other than that, most of the outputs were pretty high quality. I ended up giving Letterly a 7.7 .7 out of 10. If you wanna see more about Letterly, check out the link below and let's move on to our second app of the day. Next up is Engine Mailer. Now this is an email marketing application. It also will allow you to send off transactional emails if you're a developer. There wasn't any integrations for things like WordPress, so that was a little bit of a bummer, but everything else about Engine Mailer felt relatively good. Now this is a budget product for sure. It's not gonna have as sleek and polished of interface as something like ActiveCampaign or even ConvertKit, but I think for the price, it really does a pretty good job. One aspect about Engine Mailer that I liked is that when you buy a lifetime deal, you're paying for a certain number of emails that you send per month, not a specific number of contacts. So you can still accumulate as many contacts as you like, and you're only charged based on the amount of emails you actually send. And you're not really charged because this is a one-time purchase. So just buy a big enough plan so that you take into consideration how many times per month you plan to contact your list. One commenter noted that even though for 29 bucks, you're gonna get 12,000 emails per month, that might not be as much as it seems because if you send out a 10 email sequence to just 1,200 people, you're gonna end up using up all of your emails with no room to grow. And well, I think it's pretty unlikely that most people, just given my experience, most people don't contact their list 10 times per month. His point is valid here because even if you send out one email per week, you have to take that math into consideration when you're choosing the right plan for growing on a platform like Engine Mailer. One common concern I often have when you're looking at a lifetime deal for email marketing is the overall longevity of the platform because sending emails generally has an overhead expense tied to it. But there's one way that this tool is getting over that, and it's that they're hosting their own email sending servers. Now, that's not as scary as it seems. In fact, I even host my own email sending servers using open source software called Haraka, which ends up being the exact same tool that Engine Mailer is using on their backend. So overall, I think they have a pretty stable path for growth and not necessarily going to bankrupt themselves over having an expensive send grid bill. With this tool, you're gonna get both broadcasts or like newsletters, as well as automations, drip sequences. So you can have an automated sign up welcome sequence, and you can also send off a weekly newsletter all under the same hood. Like I already mentioned, the user interface is not as polished as you might see on other more expensive platforms, but it certainly wasn't terrible. It just could use a little bit of a designer's touch rather than the developer look I think it tends to have right now. Overall, I gave Engine Mailer a 6.7 out of 10. I definitely would check it out, especially if you're budget constrained and just getting started out. 
Next up is a tool called URL Monitor. And I think this is a kind of a confusing one to understand if you're not already entrenched in the SEO world. So there's this product from Google called Google Search Console. And what Google Search Console does is gives you a look into what Google knows about your website. You can sign up, tell Google where the web pages are using something called a sitemap, and then Google will be able to tell you how you're doing on search rankings. Now, Google's not checking your site all of the time. So if you're publishing frequently or maybe news content and you wanna make sure that Google always has the latest information, you would need to manually log into Google Search Console and ask it to re-index your site every time you make a change. With URL Monitor, it's gonna do that for you automatically. You connect up your Google Search Console account to URL Monitor, and then every day it's gonna check your site for new changes and let Google Search Console know if there are changes. Now, some comments that I saw were, this is a completely useless tool or that SEO is dead. And I've got responses to both of those. First of all, this tool is definitely not useless, but there are free options available for specific platforms. And I mentioned this in the video, but those are long videos and not everyone watches them all the way through before leaving a comment. So I understand, but if you use WordPress, a lot of WordPress SEO plugins will do instant indexing for you with a few caveats. They're tricky to set up often. You need to connect up your Google Cloud account and they're often limited to just 200 URLs per day, which probably is enough for you. But if it's not, there are larger plans available on URL Monitor for those bigger sites. Also, not everyone uses WordPress. And so if you happen to be on Shopify or Wix or Ghost or any other CMS, there might not be a really good option for you to do auto indexing unless you're using a, another SEO tool that you're paying for. So URL Monitor is simply an option to fill in those holes. I by no means insinuate that everyone must buy this tool, but I think it is providing a valuable service. As for SEO being dead, well, maybe it will be in the near future. However, it's not quite yet. I think we get into a little bit of a tech bubble where we think literally everyone is using AI for everything and just go talk to normal people that aren't in the tech world and you'll see pretty quickly that they may have heard of ChatGPT, but they've never tried it or they've tried it a few times and they thought it was cool, but they're certainly not using it on a daily basis. I know that's gonna be dated very, very quickly, but right now, as of the recording of this video, SEO is not dead. And so you might as well do the bare minimum to make sure you give yourself the shot at some free traffic via Google. And even if Google ends up replacing all of the search results with SEO data, at some point, they're gonna have to get that data from somewhere. So if you want them to be sourcing your content, assuming there's some kind of attribution model or compensation that ends up coming from this, which might be a huge assumption, you probably still wanna be on Google's radar in the long run. So a lot up in the air here, but I certainly wouldn't turn my back on SEO or wanting to be in Google's good graces, at least not quite yet. Next up is Frank AI. This is a very similar tool to what you might see if you just paid for a ChatGPT Plus subscription. It's a very nice mobile app. There's a desktop application as well, or at least a web view, where you can go ahead and engage with Frank, an AI assistant, ask for help writing things, getting images generated. You can even upload PDFs or Excel spreadsheets and ask it questions about the data. Overall, I found the user interface of Frank pretty darn good. It was not quite as good as using ChatGPT itself, but hey, this is a $69 pay once investment versus a $20 a month ChatGPT subscription. So you really can't beat the price. Now, there are a few things to take into consideration here. One, that this is actually using ChatGPT 4.0. So that sounds great and it is great. The outputs are as good as you would expect. However, it definitely raises a red flag within me and also several comments that I saw that expressed some concern that this app won't be able to sustain very long because the API costs are so high. Like this commenter who said that they wouldn't trust this deal and that you could probably build something pretty easy using the existing APIs. Well, that might be true for some people, but I know others out there have no interest in building an AI-based app, especially one for personal use, especially when there's so many good and reasonably priced chatbots around. So I don't know that I'm going to necessarily build this app myself. However, I can't disagree that 
this is a little bit hard to trust. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind here. First of all, I covered this in the in-depth video, but AppSumo actually has a new buyer protection policy that it will, if the app goes under within 12 months, they will refund either 50% of the credits if you're just a regular AppSumo customer or 100% of the credits if you are an AppSumo Plus member. So that personally gives me a little bit more peace of mind spending 70 bucks. That way, if I use it for a full year, I know that I've gotten my money's worth. And if it goes under within that year, I'll get a big chunk of that back. Or I happen to be an AppSumo Plus customer, so I would get all of it back. Another question that I had, which also came up in the comments was, hey, what are the limits on using 4.0 inside of Frank? And I was never able to find an answer for that. I looked on Frank's website. I looked on AppSumo. There was no clear definition of what any limits were. So for now, I assume you can use it as much as you like, but obviously the more you use it, the more it's going to end up costing Frank AI because they are using the API connection, which as anybody who's used that before knows, it adds up fairly quickly. So yeah, I'm not really sure what to think of that other than enjoy it while you can, and hopefully it lasts a very long time. Our last tool of the week is called OneTap, and this is a project management system that's really targeted towards developers. So the idea here is that you will have everything that you need to run a development project all inside of one tab of your browser. So we get things like chats, Slack style chat, where you can upload files and direct message people and have channels and group conversations. We also have Kanban boards where you can organize your project and you know have different lanes where you drag tasks from lane to lane and have comments and upload images to those. And then beyond that, it gets a little bit more developer specific where you can connect up to GitHub and actually set up pipelines for your project or view any changes inside of the repo. You can share API integrations. Everything is all kind of nestled inside of one place. I did find a few kind of puzzling features like they have this one feature where you could basically upload a screenshot and it would output some HTML. This was a cool feature and it actually worked better than I expected, but it just seemed a little bit out of place inside of a project management tool. It felt like we need to add some more value. Let's quick throw in this HTML generating tool. So I don't know what to make of that other than uh, it was cool, it was impressive, but I don't know that most teams are necessarily going to need that, especially in their project management sidebar. The plans on AppSumo are fairly generous, starting at five users, 15 users, and then on the high end, going up to 50 users. You also get the same amount of storage, five gigabytes, 15 gigabytes, and 50 gigabytes for each corresponding tier. So I think that's plenty. It's not going to replace an entire Dropbox or Google Drive account, but for just uploading images and having conversations about things inside of their Slack-like chat tool, I think it's probably gonna be plenty for most people. I don't think it would be necessarily a great fit for just the everyday marketing team. There's too many developer centric features that would be confusing to regular people that don't have a lot of experience with development. I also saw a real limitation in the fact that you can't add multiple versions of each tool, specifically the Kanban board. I think it's pretty common for people to have more than one board inside of a workspace and you're not able to do that. You'd actually have to create a brand new workspace if you wanted to have a second Kanban board. So uh, I found that to be just a little bit limiting, although overall the UI is fairly nice and impressive for an LTD style release. I ended up giving one tab 7.2 out of 10. If you're a development team looking for a low cost way to manage your projects, I definitely would give it a spin and let me know what you think of it. All right, we're about done here, but first I wanna thank everyone who's been clicking on my affiliate links. I've got them down below, so if you like anything in this video and you think about picking it up, go ahead and click those links before making a purchase. It helps keep this channel going. Let's get this thing growing. It's been on a rapid pace of ascension over the last few weeks, and I'm very grateful for everybody who's supporting me out there. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or just say, hey, what's up for the algorithm. I very much appreciate it. If you want help with your website, head over to clientamp.com. Myself and my team would be happy to learn about what you're trying to do online and help you grow. Thank you for watching. Once again, I am Dave Swift, and I will see you in the next review.